So it's October and almost Halloween and the scariest thing we could think of is a dead charging system on your 2017 Polaris Sportsman 570 EFI. So let RM Stator bring it back to life for you. Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to talk about installing our stator and regulator on a 2017 Polaris Sportsman 570. Uh, this process is pretty similar for some of the other newer Polaris Sportsman motors, um, but I don't know off the top of my head the other exact fitments. So this definitely applies to a 2017 Polaris Sportsman 570. We're going to be installing our stator and our voltage regulator on this thing. So to get started we need access to the right side of the motor. Um, first things we need to do is remove the seat, the side panel, and the footboard. So I'm going to get all three of those out of the way and then we'll look at the side of the motor. Okay so here we're looking at the side of the motor and uh, to get started we need to drain the coolant because we need to take off the water pump cover here on the outside. Um, to do this we just removed the hose clamp here on the radiator hose and dumped it here and uh, from the cover and with the bucket underneath. So it's a pretty easy way to drain it. So now I can get that out of the way. Um, I've got eight millimeter bolts all the way around the water pump cover. So I remove the last couple of those and get that out of the way. Okay, so a few other things we need to remove. We're gonna have to loosen the brake master cylinder um, so we can get enough clearance to remove the cover. That's 11 millimeter bolts, they're already loose, and that gives us some room to pivot this hose out of the way. Um, we also need to remove the crank position sensor, which is a single eight millimeter bolt. I already have that loose, so I'm gonna get that out of the way. And then we can see our stator cover here. Um, there are eight millimeter bolts all the way around. Some of them are kind of tight and hard to get to, but use your right combination of sockets and extensions and you can get to all of them from the side here. I'm gonna remove the last two. Okay, now that I have those out of the way, I need to make sure I unplug the stator, which is run across the front of the motor here and plugged into the regulator. It's already been unplugged, so we have that loose. Okay, so now we have everything loose and ready to remove the side cover. Now this is a really strong magnet on the flywheel, so it takes a little bit of power to get the cover off. So I'm not going to show this on video because i got to wrestle it off the motor. So we're going to get that removed and then we'll show you on the bench what the uh, side cover looks like with the stator installed. Okay, so here's our side case on the bench and our stator in it. I've already loosened all the bolts, but I'll tell you what they are and show you how to remove it. So we have uh, Allen head bolts that hold the stator in place. They are five millimeters. Um, they do have Loctite on them from the factory, so be real firm pressure, but gentle to crack them loose because you don't want to risk uh, breaking the bolt. Okay, so I've got those loose. I'm going to remove them. And we can see that the stator's loose on its mount now. Then we also have two four millimeter Allen heads that hold our bracket in place. So I'm going to remove those. They have Loctite on them as well, so just be gentle but firm pressure to remove them. And I get the bracket out of the way. And then I want to pull up till the grommet pops loose. And then I can lift the stator right out of the side case. So pretty easy to remove. Now I'm going to drop our new stator in place. Make sure that your wiring harness exits down. You don't want to install it backwards and have the wires rubbing on the flywheel. Go ahead and drop it in place in the center. Going to put my grommet in place. And then I will line up the stator mounting holes. Make sure to use Loctite on them again when you reinstall them. So I'm going to use some blue Loctite here. Red's fine as well. And use Loctite on your wire clamp when you reinstall that too. So I'm gonna get those all installed and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, together again. All right, here's our new stator installed. I have the three mounting bolts tight with Loctite and I have the wire bracket tight with Loctite. I have the new grommet in place and I've also checked the whole edge of the case to make sure it's clean and spotless and ready to made up to our new uh, gasket on the motor. So now that we have that all done, uh, we're gonna get it lined up back on the motor. One thing I wanna mention is that you can kinda see in here this uh, slotted piece that's on the impeller uh, for the water pump. Now it shouldn't have moved, but if it did, that does have to line up with a slot, um, I believe on the inside of the crankshaft. So, so you wanna make sure that's in the same original position as when you took it out and that the motor didn't turn over. Um, if you need to, you can grab the impeller on the back of the, for the water pump and you can rotate it a little bit to get that lined up, but just something to keep an eye on. 
Okay, so we're ready to put our side case with our new stator back in place. A couple things to look at. Make sure you line up the coolant passage hose here. Um, it's got some rubber gaskets on it or rubber O-rings. Just make sure you get it lined up and pressed in all the way. Um, make sure that your gear here for the uh, starter drive has not slipped. Make sure it's still firmly meshed in the starter itself and in the teeth on the back of the flywheel. Um, it's pretty uh, tight in place so it likely didn't slip, but just make sure everything's lined up correctly. Um, we put, went ahead and put a new gasket in here, so these don't, uh, it's a rubber gasket, it doesn't require any silicone sealer or anything. Our old one was in great shape as well, it really didn't need to be replaced, but it's uh, cheap insurance while you have it apart. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, make sure that the slot um, from the water pump impeller lines up with the slot here on the crankshaft. We haven't turned anything, so it should line right up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the side cover in place, move the master cylinder out of the way. And careful of your fingers because that flywheel magnet is very strong and will kind of pull this guy into place. So you're going to need to kind of wiggle stuff around a little bit until you get it lined up. So I'm close there. I'm going to go ahead and get it lined up the rest of the way and then get our bolts back in place. Um, they're eight millimeters all the way around. So I'm going to get this uh, installed, tightened up. I'm going to go ahead and put the crank sensor back in place and tighten it up. And then I am going to put our water, co uh, water pump cover back in place, tighten it up, attach our coolant hose, gonna route our stator wiring harness over to the other side and get ready for the regulator. And I will remount the master cylinder. So I'm gonna get that all buttoned back up and then we'll show you the side of the motor all back together. Okay, so we have our motor back together. Um, and uh, we went ahead and uh, filled our coolant back up and uh, we didn't need to drain the oil in this case though if you do want to do an oil and filter change it's a good time to do it um, <clears throat> but with the uh, bike up in the air on its side there's no need to drain the oil um, we have our stator connector routed over to the opposite side and now we're going to go ahead and flip uh, the ATV around so we can show you where the regulator mounts and get it changed um, as well as uh, plug in our stator so then our charging system will be complete and we'll show you how to test it Okay, so now we're going to look at our voltage regulator. Uh, we actually went ahead and installed the new one already, but the mounting position is up here at, just in front of the radiator to the frame. It mounts with two 10 millimeter bolts. So we've already put our new one in place. Um, first, I'm going to show you where the battery connection goes, and then I'll show you where the stator side connection goes. So there's two long wiring harnesses that come out of this for each of those things. Um, first is the battery connection. This is the red and the black wires. You can see our wires exit the regulator, and they come up through a loop here to hold them in place. Our red and black battery connections go up, and we'll come up here and look uh, at the front where we have the uh, utility cover open. So we have two posts here. They have 10 millimeter nuts on them. They have large red and large black wire. Those are our battery connections. Red from the regulator goes to the red, which is on the left if you're facing the front of the vehicle. And then black from the regulator goes to the bit large black wire, which is on your right if you're facing the front of the vehicle. They're ring terminals and they just attach to the um, stud and the nut tightens them down. That's it. Okay, so then if we come back around the other side, we can see our wiring harness exiting the regulator, and then we can see that it comes up and follows some existing wiring along the side of the vehicle. And we can see it here with the side plastic removed. We've got it tied up here, and it drops right down and is plugged into our stator connector right here which is a mating plug. It's the three yellow wires coming from the regulator. And I have it tied up to our battery cable here just to keep it from rubbing on the um, hot uh, hoses from the cooling system. So that's it for installing your regulator, really simple. Two bolts, uh, you need to remove your side cover to have access, but that's about it for changing the regulator. Very simple job on these. So now we'll show you how to test the charging system and since these have a voltmeter built in, it's pretty easy to see and uh, we'll see what kind of voltage we're getting out of our new charging system. Okay, so we have our uh, key on, so we're showing our display here, and it's got a built-in voltmeter, so we can see at rest our battery is setting at 11.3. That's a little low, but our battery is discharged from uh, running this thing uh, without a regulator in it while we were doing some troubleshooting. So that's not surprising. Um, we're going to start it up, and we should see the voltage climb to above 14 volts. We have a 
a very discharged battery, so we're not going to hit our peak voltage most likely of about 14.6. So we'll fire it up and see at idle, we should be pretty close to 14, and if we rev it up a little bit, we should be above that. So let's see what's going on. Okay, great. We're already seeing low 14s at idle. That's excellent. And as we rev it up, we're seeing it increase a little bit. Um, with a pretty fully discharged battery, that's not surprising to see it not hitting much more than low 14s. So it looks like we have a good working charging system on this uh, Sportsman 570 now. It's a pretty easy install on these motors. Um, I mean, like we said, if you can uh, tilt it up in the air, there's no need to drain your oil. So it's really pretty simple. You don't have to remove the flywheel. Um, you only need a basic set of tools to do it. So no reason to not replace the charging system yourself on uh, these Polaris Sportsmans.